it going guys? Right, uh, today we're going to be reviewing uh, the Atari Lynx 1 and 2. I uh, got a couple of requests from a few YouTubers for a Lynx review. Uh, so again, if there is any systems out there uh, you fancy seeing a review of, um, or having a look at some games or anything, just uh, send me a message or post up uh, a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Right, so these are then the Atari Lynx 1 and 2. Uh, this is the, the Lynx 1, uh, this came out in 1989 and the Lynx 2 uh, came out uh, later on in uh, 1991. Now, we'll start with the Lynx 1. Um, I've never actually, until I, I got this just for the review, so again, until a couple of days ago, uh, never actually owned one of these. Um, back in the uh, very late 80s, early 90s, um, me and my friend Gav used to go down to a local uh, electronics store uh, called Dixon's and uh, every Saturday they used to have a Game Boy stand and they used to have a Link stand. We used to go and play either Tetris to death and then we'd play California games uh, literally until our eyes were bleeding. Uh, we'd probably be in there for about four hours every Saturday playing it. But after a while we were completely badass at uh, the uh, kickball and uh, surfing on the Lynx. So never actually had one. My brother had a he had a Atari Lynx 2 um, with uh, what did he used to play Desert Strike on this thing. Uh, we used to have a Tele Games store in Leicester. Um, shame it's gone. It was amazing. Uh, again, used to have loads of really cool stuff in there. Um, and again, because they used to develop their own games, a lot of those were in there, which included Desert Strike, which is a really good port on the on the Lynx. Um, and again, it was, I mean, I've seen copies of that thing going now for absolutely crazy money. So you should have kept on to it, but sold it. Right, so back to the links then. So this was then, came out the, uh, the world's first uh, color LCD game system. Uh, pretty revolutionary um, back in the day, really, considering, you know, we got the Nintendo out with their Game Boy. Um, basically, like, two colors on screen. Possibly a third shade of green if you're really lucky. Um, the Lynx, however, could do up to 16 uh, colors at once. Um, again, a lot better in a way for the for, you know, the look of the games. The play of them, I think, is better. But the problem is, this thing is just freaking huge. Um, I mean, it, it really is massive. Just, just an absolute monster. I mean, they said, you know, it's portable gaming. Yeah, it is portable gaming. But getting it in your pocket or anything, just forget it. I mean, they did make like a, a, a side pouch that you could like strap onto like half of your leg. So it's kind of like a third leg as you were sort of walking along. Um, but yeah, not, not really the most popular game system in the world um, due to its size really, which is probably one of the things that really did let it down. I don't think it's too bad. It's nice and comfy in the hands. Um, again, nice sort of directional pad. Your A and B button. Uh, you've also got the uh, the classic flip button here, so again you could change the screen round and then you could play it the other way. Um, again for sort of like left and right handed people uh, and then also um, you had the, uh, the crazy option of playing it, you could play certain games um, sort of, you know, you see, it was, is it Tate, uh, where, you know, this, the, the characters are sort of going up the screen, so you could play it like that. That's one of the things that it showed on the adverts, I remember. Uh, right, so the system itself, again, let's have a quick look over it. Got a brightness buttons on the bottom there. Uh, volume control, uh, headphones and the speaker on this thing are only mono, um, which kind of sucks a little bit. Got our power um, supply there and comlinks. Now the comlinks, I again never ever seen anyone um, play these two player. Uh, I mean back at school we used to play um, like F1 race four player on our Game Boys all the time and have done like link ups with Game Gears and stuff but I think there was actually only one kid who actually had um, a Lynx so he just played on his own. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, but you can hook up to 17 of these things I think it is um, together at once which is just absolutely mental. I would love, love to see that in action. Um, I've got two, another 15 to go and I'm there. Um, right, so a quick look on the back then. So we've got our, uh, this is where we put our batteries in, six, uh, six AA batteries. Um, this thing is thirsty, thirsty for battery power as well. Again, colour screen, 
uh, it's going to whip through them in a couple of hours, if that, and that's if you've got good batteries. If you've got crappy ones, you're probably looking at about five or ten minutes and they'd be dead. Um, so that's not so good. Now on the side here, uh, we flip this open, and this is where the games go into. Uh, so we take a game itself. Now it kind of looks like the games should go in, say like that, uh, but they don't. They actually go in backwards. Uh, so they kind of slit in there and then you have to kind of tug them out. Uh, they're not the smoothest action going in and out on this machine to be honest. Um, and if you see on these, they, they actually have like a little lip at the top there. The original cartridges were completely flat, so literally like that. So it was trying to grab hold of something that had no grip at all and you could never get the games out. So the later cartridges had this little grip on there so you could basically pull it in, pull it out. So another uh, downfall of the Lynx um, is the fact that if you take this thing outside, <laughs> you just cannot freaking see the screen at all. Um, so you know you've got a real problem with that when they actually design a semi-solution, which is this. Um, <laughs> this. This beauty just clicks in here, click it in place, and then we have dun, 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 the amazing Atari Lynx Sun Visor. <laughs> which, which um, as you can see is totally awful I mean you have to kind of like look through this little periscope to uh, on a really crazy angle to actually see the screen um, but yeah that probably actually was gonna would have actually been a real lifesaver back in the 90s I'm sure so you could actually see your games because yeah any light hits this thing you just cannot see it at all so that's pretty much the Lynx 1 Also, if you have a Lynx, this is the most important piece of equipment you can possibly buy for it, the AC adapter, because this thing, again, thirsty, thirsty, thirsty for batteries. But the good thing about this, and the good thing for Atari on this one, they actually thought, obviously they knew they had a problem, because this thing has got an absolutely massive <laughs> uh, extension cable. So you can plug this in, and then I think you've got around about there must be at least six foot of cable here uh, to plug it in. So thumbs up for Atari on that one. Well done. So, right. So the Lynx 2 then. It's 1991 now. So a few differences. Um, this has got a bit of a better uh, resolution on the screen. Uh, slightly better battery life as well. Um, what else have we got that's a bit different? So we've got a power light as well in the top corner here. Um, We've also got the backlight on and off, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, we've also got stereo sound now, and stereo sound on the headphones as well. Uh, brightness and volume both on top this time as well. Uh, bigger D-pad, kind of cooler, I suppose. I like the Lynx one as well, but this one, I don't know, it does feel nice though. So again, square buttons this time. Um, if we compare the two together, I suppose they kind of took about an inch and a half probably off the outside of it but the Lynx 2 itself as you can see is a bit chunkier um, a bit thicker with sort of, sort of got a bowed screen this time on this one but about the same kind of about the same kind of weight again six uh, six AA batteries which kind of slide into the bottom of it if we can get, out, get into it so load all your batteries into there um, and away you go. Right, what else can we show you? Right, let's show you the backlit screen then. So let's get one of these going. This is again just the dumbest thing uh, that Atari could have uh, sorted out. Uh, also again, cartridges, a lot easier to get into the Lynx 2. Um, again, just pull in, straight in, straight out. So that was a lot better. So they sorted that problem out. Um, but yeah, back in the, back in the 90s, um, they were struggling really with sales uh, on this thing. It was um, it was falling really badly uh, in the way of um, the Game Boy, and um, it was. I mean, the Game Gear came out, um, and it was it was still in Europe. It was still second place. So it was the Game Boy, then the Lynx, then the Game Gear. But in America, um, again, it was it was in third place by a long way. All right, give it a blow. I've not tried this yet. Let's 
see if we can get it going. Hello. <laughs> I just had it going a minute ago. It's playing Paperboy. Oh, hang on, we're on. Alrighty. All right. Let's get the. Uh, there we go. It was the brightness. So we've got it going, and then this was Atari's amazing um, energy-saving invention. So you're playing your game, and they say, well, you can turn off the backlight at the back um, to save power, and then help you, you know, your batteries last longer. So we turn off the backlight now. And then we can't actually play the game at all. It's in complete darkness. So yes, well done. Well, with psychic energy, we will now play Crystal Mines 2. So yeah, dumbasses there at Atari. Right. So let's have a quick uh, go on this. Ne never played this one before. Oh, level code. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> Not so good. Robot destroyed. Yeah, really, really great game there. No, right. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Uh, I'll turn off the lights and I'll come back with another game.